So I'm calling the meeting to order at 619. And um, uh, just uh, we'll go through uh, um, present, Lily, Frank, Sean. Do you prefer Dave or David? Uh, Dave, but Dave. I, I'm not particular. There are too many Daves, you know, so. <laughs> I, I like Alan, so I always try to ask for, yeah, so Dave's good. Yeah. And then we have uh, George. And I am present. Also. Yes, you are present. I, thank you for confirming that. And uh, then uh, George, and how do you pronounce your last name, George? Tolumsis. Sorry? Tolumsis. Tolumsis. Okay, as a guest uh, and uh, also representing uh, uh, some issues with uh, the town of Greenfield related to bikeways. And we might uh, be able to adjust the, the um, agenda a little bit, maybe to let you. Um, that would be a kindness, I think. Say a few words and then and um, we can uh, respond and get on get on with our other agenda. So I think if nobody objects, we'll move that up. Um, can we just we do, do our minutes though first, so we can get yeah, those. Sure, done. sure. Can you? Um, um, so I so I move that we approve the minutes from June twenty second, September twenty second, and October twelfth. As, so the um, I saw Alan. You were wondering where the October twelfth minutes were. There yeah. on the agenda. If you, there was a link on the agenda. Well, there was. Yeah, because um, Ben wasn't there for those, and I took those because, and I do them right in. That's right. Time. All right. Well, I'm very happy, even though I didn't read those. I'm very happy to uh, um, approve of the of the minutes. So, pardon me. Sure. Um, the I believe the agenda is is listing the incorrect date. Uh, the twenty second is uh, a Thursday. You always meet on Wednesdays, and it's the following Thursday of the week that you normally meet. I think it should be. But we, the but we didn't. We we only just established that last meeting. Oh, all right. I I think the all right. I mean, I, I may be right. Wrong. It looks like it was the fourteenth. That's that's why you I are, think you are correct. All right. I will rename that in the 10 14 9 14 9 14 so yes June, okay. it's the it and I just amended it in the agenda <laughs> anyway but anyway for June okay. 22nd September 14th and October 12th good catch Tom. okay very good so, so with okay. that um with that uh correction um do I have a motion to approve the minutes can we keep, uh, as a lawyer, I hate Robert's rules of order. Can we keep talking about it after we second uh, second the motion? Did anybody second it? That's the question. Well, I'll second it as I'll long as I can. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Uh, nope. Yeah, I guess you can keep talking about it after you second it. Yeah. So my only thought was I'm pretty sure at the, la the minutes of the last meeting didn't show Ben as present. Um, but he was, and I'm pretty sure we waited for him. I know we had a quorum. We waited for a quorum. There are only two right. members listed in the minutes, and I, yeah. I'm not sure that's yeah. accurate. I'm not sure if three yeah. is a quorum. I know we had a quorum, and I know Ben joined us. You, you, you are right, uh, Dave. Ben was there. <laughs> so um, can you? Yeah. Make okay. A I, I added Ben. Um, sorry, my phone is ringing. I got to tell it to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um yes because he came later after we had started because that's why i was taking the the minutes and not that's ben. right that's right um and that and i was happy to hand them over good catch okay so um with that uh thank you Any, for that anything else clarification Anybody? i guess I'll, I'll move that we amend the minutes of the last meeting to include the fact that ben benson was there I second. All right. uh, raise your hand, all those in favor. Aye. Aye. Excellent. Aye. Now we're all caught up. So as the Admiral of Administrivia, I can get those out. <laughs> out okay. to the town hall hey. you. Okay. 
Um, <clears throat> so um, I, I hear no objection to the fact that uh, G George could uh, say a few words about uh, what he's trying to accomplish working with the Community Preservation Committee in Greenfield and how that might uh, affect us or give us an opportunity um, to be involved as well. So, George, do you want to? Great. Thank you so much. I, I wasn't anticipating being accommodated by the start of the meeting. That's very, very kind, very generous. And I'll try to be succinct and please feel free, Alan, to cut me off if I'm running too long. Uh, okay. I'll, uh, the context is I'm an avid cyclist. I've lived in Greenfield for 20 years, moved here. Uh, is anyone else, pardon me just a minute, is anybody else having a little trouble with volume? Oh. It could just be on my end. I'm fully up. I think involved. Sean said yes as well. Um, George right. is a quiet speaker, but yeah, I'm okay. actually not. <laughs> That's not what I've usually been told, um, and I don't. I'm not too keen on how to adjust my volume from this end. Yeah, just uh, that... if you have a microphone uh, icon or anything, and make just make sure it's up. Is that any better? Or... I, I think it's better now. Right? Okay, great. Go ahead. Thank you. So. Um, and uh, so I have, uh, I'm a functional and recreational cyclist. And I, uh, my first eight years here actually worked in Northampton and bike commuted much of the time. So I have ridden the three miles between uh, the uh, Greenfield Deerfield border on uh, at the bridge on 510 down to the um, uh, Main Street entrance into Old Deerfield hundreds and hundreds of times. I'm a seasoned cyclist, obviously, I'm comfortable doing that. But um, I've long thought, boy, it's it's so awful that that three mile stretch is so daunting for a less seasoned cyclist, for families and connecting Greenfield and um, Old Deerfield would be so wonderful for so many reasons. Recreation, commuting, uh, cycling tourism, and once you get to Old Deerfield, then you, there are a lot of other side roads you can get to uh, from there. So it's long been a vision of mine that, boy, that would be great. And when our, we just passed the CPC, or having the first rounds of applications, and I just was inspired to put something in. And the pre-application, as you know, is very vague and just vision -y And <laughs> so I put that in, and uh, it was deemed by the CPC that it did meet it eligibility, even though... Uh, a lot of what would be looked into would be in Deerfield because it would be connecting and that actually, as you guys would know better than me, is within uh, CPA rules. Um, and so they did narrow it down to just looking at a feasibility study. Um, and so I have consulted, I've gotten the, you know, enthusiastic support of our planner in Greenfield and our head of our recreation department. And, uh, I had also talked with Alan and with Lori Rusardis, and I think on the energy committee um, who were also interested. And I consulted with Megan Rhodes and Beth Janini, who are senior transportation planners at FERCOG. And they pointed out that in Deerfield's 2000 master plan, uh, it actually specifically references making some kind of connection like this and envisioning it being an off-road connection taking uh, Old Ferry Road up from um, Old Deerfield uh, through the farm. Uh, it's kind of a farm road and then somehow connecting and whether it would be a, a additional river crossing or uh, coming across the Cheapside Bridge and somehow getting off and connecting there. So, um, so I, and then in the 2009 FERCOG bike plan, they referenced that uh, um, Deerfield master plan. And they were talking about trying to get a feasibility study of that off-road route. So I met um, last week with um, Beth and Megan and there in looking at the details, there's a preliminary look. Uh, there was some concern once you get across um, into Deerfield of making that connection because of slope issues and wetland issues. So they suggested we could still do a feasibility study of that, but uh, another possibility would be to try to uh, uh, make uh, changes on 510 itself. And uh, she mentioned and there have certainly been ones down in the South Deerfield area. I've biked by there. It's much improved from a cycling perspective. 
And she said they're moving, the mass dot is moving north. And so they're actually working planning stage, I think on um, old Main Street out of uh, uh, old Deerfield and 510. And then they're gonna be coming north at some point. So what they were recommending, Beth and uh, Megan, was to um, uh, propose a feasibility study that would uh, look at both these options, being on 510 or potentially getting off it and making it an off-road connection. Um, and um, they said it could be eligible for Mass Trails grant, so to supplement any money from the CPC. Um, they were also saying that, um, that because it's a state road, 510 isn't eligible for Complete Streets funding, but it could be eligible, or this, it was a new terminology, be prioritization of Complete Streets consideration could be done there, but that would have to be per a request of the town. So, so that's kind of the, where I'm, I'm not into, you know, these kind of details of these kind of plans. I just have this vision and I'm trying to consult with a lot of people who know what they're doing and also consult with you folks in Deerfield because this is very much a, you know, a two town um, benefit and uh, uh, collaboration would be great. And when I contacted um, Alan, he suggested, you know, there could be some collaborative effort. And I know, it, you know, that's tricky because typically the CBC is my understanding don't initiate uh, proposals, but they respond to proposals from uh, the community or from town entities. So, so that's kind of where it stands. I'll just mention that I have a deadline for the final application of November 30th. <laughs> so, uh, the decision wouldn't be made by our city council till mid next year. So, uh, there would be some time to maybe, you know, add endorsements or other options, perhaps through your. Uh, your committee's plan. Um, Lori had also, I think you might've seen this email, Alan uh, has suggested yes. that the, mm -hmm. um, the CPC could in, kind of initiate the idea of the select board in Deerfield uh, asking for complete streets consideration for that section of 510. Um, and the energy committee she was suggesting could second it. Again, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with um, uh, Greenfield Civic Matters because I'm on the planning board and the Master Plan Implementation Committee, but I'm clueless about Deerfield, so yeah. it's been very helpful well, to have this uh, support. So I'll stop there. So thank you. Okay. Well, well, thank you, George. And um, yeah, it, it's it's not all that different in, in Deerfield. There are probably, I'm sure, some some uh, differences, but um, structurally and uh, in terms of uh, we do have a select board instead of a uh, mayor and town government like you do, but. Um, I, does anyone have any thoughts? Of, I mean, any reasons why we wouldn't be willing to submit an endorsement uh, from, I, I think probably the select board would be the most important one to be asked to do that, but uh, maybe even the, the uh, community preservation committee might be appropriate a, a, as well. I know there have been collaborative um, uh, from time to time, there have been collaborations between towns, I think, with uh, CPC projects, but I don't think probably we're at the stage right now where that's likely to be. I mean, I mean you, you weren't necessarily expecting or hoping for a, some kind of a, yeah, you have a feasibility study now, correct? I what, mean, funding for it. No, um, I put no in the pre-application and I'm putting in the, um, final application by the end of this month, which would be uh, a proposal to do a feasibility study. So that right. would be what seeking That's right. okay. CPC Thanks. money for that. And I wasn't expecting anything definitive, just, um, and I don't know, you would know better than me, once I put in that final application in the intervening months, how much can I, you know, can further collaboration happen or something like that? I would, I would hope there'd be some possibility of that. But. Right, right. Thanks. So um, I have a question. Um, and as you pointed out, George, um, the CPC actually responds to things. Yeah. It doesn't initiate them sometimes to our frustration, but, uh, there, <laughs> yeah, um, but there is a gentleman in Deerfield, Greg Franceschi, who has been really active in trying to get bike paths going and, um, 
maybe the thing to do would be to have Greg spearhead it or somebody, a Deerfield resident yep. spearhead it if you could get them to work with you. Does that make sense to you all? It's okay to respond, Ellen? Uh, well, I, what, I, what I'm aware of from your most recent uh, uh, communication, George, is that he hasn't responded to your request right. for right. for information or uh, any kind of contact. Right. And I think uh, Greg maybe dropped the ball there. And um, so I, your, your, your suggestion is correct, I think, uh, Lily, but... Um, not the, not the identified possibility. What about Lori Usada? Uh, well, I think Lori would say is definitely interested in, and she seems quite quite responsive. Um, what I what I'm concerned about is that since this really is a project that um, is on our side of the bridge, um, if, primarily we we, we um, f for his feasibility proposal to get support, it seems just appropriate that um, that we find the appropriate uh, board or committee in town to uh, submit, have, be, be able to, for you to submit a letter of uh, in, endorsing the, the, the feasibility study from, from the town. And um, I mean, that is a, anybody who has ridden a bike on there or <laughs> uh, it knows very well what you're talking about. And there, and there actually was a fatality, I think, um, right in that stretch somewhere about four or five years ago of a, for, a, for a bicyclist. And um, the, so- the, the fatality was actually just across from old, uh, old Main, the entrance of Old Main old Street Main, onto 510. Yes. That was right. my old bike that was there for several years. Oh, the white, the ghost, bike. white the, ghost bike, yeah, until it yeah. was finally oh, taken okay. down. Yeah. yeah. So, so um, so, so are you thinking that we would we would write a letter in support or write a letter to the select board asking them to support this with the well, that's I, I'm not exactly stuff? sure what the protocol should be for uh, I, I think the select board letter would have a little bit more effect but we as a uh, neighboring community preservation committee I think certainly could send a um, a paragraph or so that uh, says that we're familiar with this proposal and we um, support the, uh, we uh, encourage the funding for this feasibility study to go forward, blah, blah. And um, does anybody have an issue with that? Well, I just have a couple, no, uh, I don't have an issue with it, but I have a couple of questions. Um, sure. So, George, would the feasibility study be fully funded by Greenfield and include like the full length of the project, or are you asking for funding from Deerfield for the feasibility study? You know, both towns. To, are you asking for both sure. towns to contribute or just Greenfield? Well, I I can't obviously request it from uh, Deerfield. I'm requesting some money for that from the for out of the Greenfield CPC funds. And uh, as I said, the uh, Mass Trails grant was something that FERCOG had suggested could uh, additionally be involved. Though I think that would take um, a matching grant of 20, per, I mean, a matching uh, of 20% or something like that. So certainly the ideal thing would be if these were parallel processes and uh, someone was coming to you folks for funding uh, as well. and, and um, Actually, Lily Lori had recommended Greg. I've never met Greg, but she had recommended him. And I haven't given up on trying to reach him. And with you mentioning yeah, him I, as an I obvious would, person, I I'll persist. continue. Yeah. Could I, could I just ask, are we sure that, um, well, two questions. Are we sure of two things? Can Greenfield fund a feasibility study that encompasses both towns, or the city and the town? And Yes. Oh, sorry. It can. I was, I was, that was affirmed by the chair of the CPC at the meeting when I went before them. So yes, I was, I, I was I'll assume surprised. That that's true. That's great. Yeah. Uh, assuming that's true. Do we know that you can't make an application to us? I mean, if they can fund a project in Deerfield, do we know that we can't accept an application from you? 
high that would be up kind of presentation. Yeah. I, I don't I'm know. I'm not aware, aware of a precedent um, yeah. for that, but um, Lily, do you have? I'm, you know, no, I mean, it, to me, it just seemed like uh, that. Why not? Because it is about the community. Yeah, but I and, think. Yeah. No, I get that. Why not? Definitely, if we can get a Deerfield person to sort of. That's you know, the main thing: is getting somebody to submit it. Yeah. Um, who you know who can be uh, doing it on behalf of the town to do it um, as a joint uh, proposal. Do you, think, do you think the open space committee could be co-sponsors or something like that? Uh, <laughs> I, I think. We, I think we probably could. Um, I mean, sir, certainly we're, we're just finishing our open space master plan and uh, biking and hiking uh, uh, to, and for recreational uh, access for all, you know, recreational activities is part of our uh, part of our um, mandate. And and um, I we we were a pretty. Yeah, and I, 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 well, let's just. Do, who are you? Who's your contact person with FERCOG, <clears throat> George? Um, I have two: Megan Rhodes and Beth Janini. They're both senior transportation planners. Megan Rhodes and who? I think I have Beth, it in emails. Yeah. Beth Janini. Okay. Right now, we are working with um, Allison Gage at FERCOG as our uh, support person for developing our master plan. And I'm perfectly uh, willing to uh, check in with her. And um, not that she's got a definitive, um, yes, no, it's no problem, but uh, I, I, I'm the chair of the open space committee as the rep and the representative to the CPC. So uh, let, me, let me go ahead and uh, pursue that. I, I always tend to defer to the select board as having the clout because they're they're the ones. But it, then again, the, our own community preservation committee has the resources. Do you have the, I, I, I can't remember, I looked at it when you first sent it, but do you have a number that you're um, requesting from, from Greenfield? A uh, dollar amount? Yeah. Is it? No, not yet. And Beth is uh, helping to She's working that. Uh, working right. that up? And it was actually Allison who had given Megan uh, and passed on to me your name and Lori's names. So, uh -huh. so okay. she was consulted about this too. So she would be a little familiar with it. I just well, want I just sorry. want to flag I just want to flag that if I was and I don't really ha I have no problem with this within you know the limits of our budget and our resources and the other applications we get in obviously. Um, I have no problem with it, but if I were Greenfield, I'd say, yes, thank you for the endorsement, Deerfield. You know, we'll be very happy to do this, especially if you pick up part of the price tag for this feasibility study. I, I just think the concept that this is all going to be on Greenfield, if we give it our hearty endorsement, yeah, I doubt that's going to happen. But yeah, I hear you. As I say, I don't have a problem with that, you know, within the just noting yeah, I, I, I'm more thinking, Dave, of, of just what is the, uh, um, you know, what, what are the precedents for as far as the, there's a lot of things on computing, community preservation money that um, the uh, state revenue um, bureau or what I can, you know, the name uh, can get very involved if they see anything that they think is um, in the, in the least bit sketchy or not in, a, in the act itself, in the Community Preservation Act itself. So I think it does take a little bit of um, judicious checking on, on that. Personally, I have absolutely, I, I, I think, especially for a feasibility study that doesn't amount to a huge amount of money, um, is, there's no reason why I, I think we wouldn't welcome a proposal that would be collaborative or the two towns may be working individually, but pooling their resources so yeah uh, and I, I, I agree and I mean I think yeah you're thinking of the division of re, uh, it's the division of revenue de, or department of revenue division of 
local resources or something like that. Yeah, right, right. But, but they're pretty responsive too. I mean, I've had in other contexts had cause to contact them and uh -huh. they're pretty responsive. And they're, you know, this like intermunicipal cooperation. I don't know if it's on the wane, but it has been yeah. sort of a drumbeat for the last 20 years or whatever. So, yeah. Well, the, the town did get shot down once pretty, pretty significantly uh, by them. So, um, you know, I, I'm just think, thinking of that, but I don't think this is on the same scale and I don't think it should be, I don't, I just don't think it should be much of a problem. Um, any other so comments? I, guess I would, I would make, a, I would make a motion that we, um, well, actually, we'll back up for a second. Are we gonna? Do we want to write a letter to the select board, or is that a little premature? Maybe. It, it, to me, I still think it'd be best if Lori or the Open Space Committee, um, actually were the ones speaking up. Say to write us a letter, and then we would write a letter in support of their initiative to the select board that could also be shared with the Greenfield CPC. Do you see what I'm saying? That we would be supporting their initiative, but that there be evidence of some initiative from Deerfield, which I think would make the case stronger all around. Yeah, but I, th I think I think um, we're 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 now kind of moving on to something beyond that. Of of I, I'm I'm hearing that maybe even through this cycle we might be trying to um, have a, a complementary proposal coming into the CPC for um, contributing funds to this to this feasibility study. Is that is that where you were headed, Dave? I kind of see that's where it would go, yeah. Um, and I think, you know, George, just so you know, um, we're on a slightly different, as I understand it, you know, we're on a slightly different timeline than, than Greenfield. So our deadline is not November 30th. Um, it's after that. And so, yeah, I mean, I think first, that actually. I think whatever we do, we need to do it as sort of our overall process for the year. Yeah, yeah. I I, I got the sense it was different, but it's, thank you, Alan, for saying it's March first. That's helpful. Which yeah, it gives us some some room to work with, you know. So I I would encourage you, George, to uh, to follow up with with Greg and see. I I I'm surprised because he's he he talks by like um, <laughs> access and, and uh, improvements in, lay, in uh, bike paths all the time. Um, so I think he, he probably just maybe is bogged down on something and, and yeah. uh, could, could follow through. Lily, I think uh, you're absolutely right. I, I, with, unless there's any um, objection, I, I will, uh, we have a, actually a open space meeting coming up on Tuesday and I could initiate a uh, uh, an email to Allison and try and get that squeezed into the agenda for uh, something to to be able to at least get get moving on that on that side. I wonder, George. Um, in in my experience, people are always most appreciative if you write the letter of recommendation that you're asking them to slightly <laughs> modify and then send. It's just, it's a thought, but That's it, would, always a welcome, uh, it yeah. would really help Alan with the open space thing, because then it would be just a question of people um, peeing on the fire hydrant enough so that they feel like they can sign it. Yeah, if you, uh, yeah, George, if, if you, uh, I, I don't know what, what your um, time time availability oh, that's is. Fine. If you that's could, fine. If you, if you could send something and copy in us uh, at CPC and uh, open space and just email it to me as open space, but uh, kind of repeat some of the things you very briefly you've done done in the previous emails and then saying you're seeking um, support. I mean, well, you're seeking endorsement and possibly even support and even a little uh, wording if you're seeking that from others would be nice. Yeah, and I don't know if that you were included in this one, Alan, but Lori, had uh, mentioned that tomorrow is a uh, energy committee meeting and she had made a similar request of giving okay. her something in writing. Great. So I'll get a so, little practice. Yeah, don't, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 
one version is great for right. Right. <laughs> any and all of us. All right. Oh, oh thank I, you so I, much. I, oh, good. I just want to say I I don't know if we have to vote on the those actions, but I I vote to I vote to approve those actions. Uh, it probably doesn't hurt to have a motion that okay. we um, we uh, in, in, um, um, continue our conversations with George and and uh, the CPC of Greenfield to um, uh, look into the possibility of a feasibility study for five and ten. I second that. Side. I second that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I'm going to abstain only because I don't think we need the motion. But You don't <laughs> think what? I support the motion, but I'm abstaining because I don't think we need it. Okay. Oh, you don't think we need it? All right. <laughs> well. I could be wrong. It's, it, we, it's yeah. done. It exists. <laughs> Are you uh, all right? Let's let's just say the, the motion passes with one abstention, and uh, we'll see whether or not we need it or not. I I, I do appreciate that uh, even from your legal standpoint, you're willing to allow for the kind of uh, informality that volunteer boards oftentimes. I'm not here as a lawyer, Alan. I'm not here as a lawyer. <laughs> all right, great. I'm Very here good. as. Nope, walked out of high school however many years ago. <laughs> Not as a lawyer. All right. But I did okay. want to say, George, so, thank you for all your legwork on this. Yeah. Thank, thank you very you, much. Thank and, you, George, for yep. all of us. And uh, is Best there anything else we need to do on this item? All right. I just very much appreciate you accommodating me with so much time and early in the agenda. So it was very appreciated. Okay. Very good. All right. Thank you. Evening. Take care. How do I know? Um, all hey, right. I, would, I would like to make a motion that we, the public information walkthrough, we move to the, the bottom of the meeting and potentially table till the next one because the application packet, we have already started to get um, quite, people asking about it. And we definitely need to update it to please, dear God, not have people make 10 hard copies and leave in the town hall. Um, so I would yes. love, I would move that we move the application packet review up to our next item. Uh, okay. Uh, again, do, does anyone have an issue with that? All right, let's, let's, let's do that then. And, um, and you want me to share my screen now? Yeah, you, you did you you have that packet that, or the thing I that I do. said today? Yeah. I so do. Our, just a quick overview for new for those of you who are, are new. Um, you know, we've used a pretty standardized form for CP applications. It's a, a little bit more detailed than some towns and not as detailed as others. I think it's kind of got a balance, and we go back and forth every year to say, well, is this point really necessary or or that one? So I think uh, we'll do a little bit of um, just housekeeping on it tonight. <clears throat> and um, then maybe Lily can send it around to everybody and you can take a look at it and see whether or not you find it uh, uh, some, something that just doesn't seem appropriate for, uh, for our town or for um, this year or, or whatever, but uh, it's worked pretty well for us. And there's a lot of things that people just have, all they have to do, because it asks it for a lot of information that oftentimes it's just not applicable to the nature of the proposal. So we see a lot of proposals coming in um, that do have the opportunity to say not applicable on several of the uh, criteria. So what I did today was simply um, this morning is just quickly try and update the dates for the 2023 year. Um, uh, so you can see there, uh, Sean, I didn't, I wasn't too sure who uh, you're, and uh, Frank, are you uh, represent, I mean, are you, you're not appointed by the assessors, are you? Alan, yes. while you're right on that line, could you add an E in front of the Y to my last name? 
Oh, sorry about that. Actually, it's actually me that's typing, just so you know. Oh, no worries. No. I've got this up. So, Alan, what I have this up in a Google Drive so I can make corrections as we talk, and then I'll yeah. send it to you. Okay. Okay, great. So, um, Frank, who, who was your appointing authority? Do you know? Uh, the assessors. I was on the board. Okay, and, said, yeah. great. and then um, um, David was. So, David, you said. Uh, are you select board? And I know. Well, Tim that's what you said, that, Alan. Yeah, I think so. I don't yeah. really know. I okay. Well, sort of got an email saying congratulations. You're on the committee. Yeah, <laughs> great. So we'll we'll work with this, and uh, and uh, that I think we've got it now, so that it's accurate. Um, okay. So then uh, I changed the dates down here, where you see. Uh, so, but can I? I don't think. Casey is not acting town administrator. She is the town administrator. That's correct. Good. Okay. And then what I'm asking, uh, actually, Lily, you and I can do this, but I, I think I need to get one of those CPC. At Would you like me to do it at Deerfield Life? Okay, yeah. I can, I'll do that. So that um, I can um, have, have my personal email. Yeah. I, I've, been, I've been putting it off, but at this point, for things like this, it just makes good sense. And then I might have to ask you a question or two of how I how to access it. Absolutely. Input that into my uh, yeah, yeah Apple Mail or whatever. Yep, happy to do that. We'll okay. make it so you can make a note of that. And then I looked at my 2023 calendar, and I think this is I have the correct dates for the second Wednesday. Wednesday, the March first date is just when the applicants have to submit to the town administrator the application. So we're, that's not a meeting date for us. And then we would meet on March 15th for a review of the submitted proposals. And we would also invite any of the applicants to attend the meeting if they wish um, for information or uh, any updates they have to to do because sometimes when these come in at the very first time they're a little bit uh incomplete but we try to make them be really fairly complete by the time they they reach, reach that march 1st deadline and just on that note we'll also be uh sending around we we try to put put a notice in the newspaper on uh community access television um, and just kind of spread the word, send send uh, an, an email, just uh, letting in all the other towns and boards in town, or at least most of them know that we are now in the process of uh, accepting applications for the uh, 2023 cycle. And um, We've talked about this, and Lily has uh, talked about it too. You know, we keep thinking there's got to be some better ways or some better communication so that we um, can get proposals in in time and in good fashion and give everyone the opportunity who's eligible. But uh, I think it's getting pretty well established now, and there's a lot more talking about uh, CPA funds uh, in town meetings of various committees and boards. So I'm not too worried about that for, for this year. Uh, so then we do a final recommendation. That's you know, simply what we're doing and what our job is, is primarily to see that the applications meet the criteria uh, that we, the, the, they have followed the guidelines faithfully to the extent necessary, and that it's a uh, it qualifies as a, a for, for CPA funding. We can go on and suggest, obviously, a number of things that they can do to improve the proposal. We can comment about budgets uh, and whether we think they're appropriate for the project. And we can also ask them to submit at least a minimum of one uh, bid or qualified kind of invoice or whatever it happens to be that would uh, suggest to us that they've done a little bit of homework and they kind of know that the funds they're seeking are within uh, some uh, possibility that they're they're going to fit well for what the project is. 
And then uh, we have uh, April 20th, we as a provisional meeting, sometimes we don't even need that meeting. Uh, but it, uh, oftentimes that's really about having a quick meeting on Zoom because the town moderator or the town lawyer or someone on the select board wants us to do help with the wording on the warrant or to uh, submit some uh, kind of a brief description of the, of the project for the warrant. So that's just kind of a fill in opportunity for us to get everything in shape. It's kind of a short timeline between then, then and the 25th. So we may be looking at a somewhat different date for that. So uh, I, I think that's the most important part about that. And we're not gonna go through all the sections tonight in any detail because you'll have a chance to look at those, but um, yeah, you can kind of just scroll through, I think some of this. Um, uh, yeah. The, so the question is, on the, hmm? where do they submit? The, if uh, we're asking for them electronically, we need yes. to uh, that, that Did I leave you a marginal line as a comment there? Because I, I, uh, I think we, yeah. I think we want to know who. You know, I assume that's going to be uh, somebody in Casey's office. I think we've. We've well, normally had but, had, but actually, I mean, if you think about it, the 10 hard copies were always just to the committee. So maybe it makes sense to have your, um, well, I can create a chair.cpc at deerfield.life email that you and you and Frank or just you can have, and then you all would forward us the applications. Would that work? I kind of, I kind of like that step that they get it to somebody in town hall before, before it, it comes to me or anybody else on the committee, because that's a, that's a real formal thing of yes, you have submitted it. Now maybe it happens at the same time, but um, and I just I don't know what would Casey do with it or you know what I mean. In other words, what would to whom would it go, and what would they do with it? <laughs> well, I, I would think it, you know, I would think it would be someone like Pat Kroll. And here's what's going to happen: there's going to be some, some. I I can almost guarantee somebody's going to come in and request a printed copy. And oftentimes, it's people from another committee or board, mm -hmm. or it might be even a town's person, you know, somebody in town, and it and um. I, I kind of, you know, I don't. I, so my, maybe that maybe they should go to the um, assistant town administrator, but we should that check. That sounds good. That that's what we want. It, I mean, that we should check with them. Yeah. And find out if if that works for them, and then the assistant town administrator would be responsible for emailing, say, you and you would mail it out to everybody on the committee or they would email it to everybody on the committee. I, I don't know. We should ask them how they prefer to do it. It's just that I will say that um, there's been a great deal of turnover at town hall and I believe they're still understaffed. I'm not entirely sure. They may have filled all the slots. Yeah, no, um, I hear you. I hear I you. Think, yeah, I, I, that if we don't, so we just, we, we should ask, I guess. Right. I just um, I'm I'm not for for uh, uh, clumsy and inefficient uh, bureaucratic uh, de additional uh, onerous details that people need to do. But I I just feel like if it's if people know that they are sending a proposal, um, I we're we're on the record record here. But I don't mind at all saying that the only usually if we get a request for somebody to go past the March 1st date, it's oftentimes the select board. I mean, not oftentimes, because it hasn't happened that often, but um, we have to be, I think, really pretty firm on this. And and um, once, some, once somebody is allowed to say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know who I was supposed to send it to, and it's late and we can, we can say, well, um, you know, what are the circumstances? But it gives us a little bit of leverage to just not have these 
you know, sometimes we've had some really poorly done proposals come in the very last minute or even late and asking for um, permission to to have it go through that that cycle. So I think I'm I'm I inherited the 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 first members on the board were real sticklers about this. I don't think it should be absolute absolute, but I'd really like it to have that piece of coming to the town. Uh, somebody in who's officially uh, responsible. So I think the assistant town administrator is good, and uh, we can we can check in and see what what those folks want to do. Okay. Is that all right? Works for me. Okay. Uh, I th I don't think we need to go through any of this unless you see a marginal thing. Um, tonight, because it can, it, it's going to take us quite a long time. Right here, that that, that is uh, one of the things we've got to check in. Who, um, Lily, you must know who can give us this information on low or moderate income senior housing. Hang it. I'm gonna. Um, um, so, yeah. As a matter of fact, as senior housing right now, we are just looking at. Um, the area median income and that kind of stuff. So it has to be uh, the 80% of the AMI. Um, you can put that on my to-do and I'm, I'll leave this up on the drive and I'll send the link for this doc that's on the drive because it's probably easiest if people were able to read it on there because then everybody can make changes if they or comments um, for our next meeting kind of a thing. Yeah, uh, and I I will uh, I will put that on my to do list. I will I will fill those in. Okay, and yeah, that's it. If it's up on, if it's, it's gonna, it would be on Google Drive. Yeah, I will send the link. Yeah, uh, and um, I will send it to everybody's email. Okay. That, that that I have. How, how will it come? Will it come as a Word document? No, you. What it'll come in an email as a link, and you click the link, and it will open it right on the Google Drive, just as I'm doing it here. And yeah. what you do is you see this pencil here. This is yeah. editing mode, and you say edits become suggestions, and that's yeah. what we should. You know, that's what it's set for um but you probably want to check to make sure that's yeah, yeah I'm, I'm remembering now I, I used to use the google docs before with some collaborations and so on but yeah pretty been... much that's all we would have to do just make sure that you do edit as suggestions and and that uh each person is identified as exactly you see how here uh, making I changes. That lily needs yeah. to update this yeah. alan did that okay so i think if people do have an opportunity it'd be great to go through this and carefully look and see what you think is missing or um, could be improved upon. But uh, this it is pretty well time tested now. So, but I think we're, we've at least sorted out most of the uh, glitches and little issues that people were having. So just to, as, as someone who has had to submit one of these, um, that just to go over, there's a general questionnaire that everybody answers, all categories answer. And then if you're doing open space, you fill this up. But if you're not doing open space, you would say do recreation. But in my case, we did or preservation. preservation. Yeah. <clears throat> we did a we did a community housing questionnaire. Um and so um that's that's the general idea. There's general questions that now don't get dizzy. Sorry, everybody. This is the one bad thing about sharing the screen. Um, okay, the you, this everybody fills out this application form in which you say which categories you're applying for because you can do it for more than one. Um, the amount that you're doing it, and so then this should just be like the summary. Then there's a thing with your supporting documentation um <clears throat> and then here's the general questionnaire you know how does it comport with our our master plan and open space plan etc cetera, etc cetera. just to give a, the general layout of the 
Right. Yeah, this is good. So maybe if um, each of us that was responsible, that was representing a certain area of the town, like I should look at the housing. And if anybody else has housing expertise, you would look at that too. <clears throat> and um, Alan, you and Sue would do recreation, I guess. Or Open space and recreation. Open yeah. space and recreation. Um, and Ben could do the historic. Yeah. Um, and then... Um, I, mean, I don't know if others have, but if everybody looks at all of them anyway, but at least, you know, put a BDI on your area of expertise. Right. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing because. Anything that, uh, yeah, seems more appropriate. Um... Uh, Con Conservation Commission, yeah, definitely uh, can overlap there and, and so on. And um, so, all right, anything else about uh, the proposal? Do, does anyone know, uh, have, a, have a sense of any uh, projects that might pe people might be um, planning to submit that you've heard on? Uh... I know, well, senior housing is, is coming back. Um... Yeah. The 1888 building, I believe, is going to be coming back. That's what we're the uh, the con connecting community initiative is calling the former yes. senior center slash grammar school because it's been so many things. They decided to call it the 1888 building. I'm pretty sure they're coming back because they did not get their grant. They didn't. Yeah. Um. um Senior housing is definitely coming back. Um, the question of, well, just like for everybody, all the money that we were initially quoted went up by <clears throat> like 70% <laughs> by the time we finally got to do stuff. So we peeled things back and- yeah. um, I think I I think it's very, very likely that Tilton would, um, be submitting but also. Tilton, no doubt, will be submitting as well. And I don't know what's up with the park. I mean, the park got that grant. And so should it move forward in time to be able to capitalize on the grant, they may be returning money to us. That's right. There's a, what is it? It's a 900 and some thousand yeah. dollar grant, but it has to be used just like all these grants within a certain time frame so we uh we've we've already granted two million and some change i think to the park and uh that if that st starts to get really slow slow down to a standstill uh, that could really jeopardize that return of that money and we're already looking i can just think you know off the top of my head um if we have uh senior housing 1888 building and Tilton we're already looking at pretty much uh, what's available in, in funds right now. I, I'll have to check with Brenda and see where we are right now with non-committed funds. Right. Um, we, you saw that thing from Stuart Saginaw though, right? There's going to be another distribution. Right. There, there is going to be another distribution. That's good. Yeah. $20 million for the state, which uh, there's more and more towns adopting uh, CPA every year. So that means that the ability to match towns uh, tends to go down, but still that's nothing to laugh at. That could be a nice little bump. Yeah, every bit helps. Um, but yeah, those are the big ones, I think. Yeah, you're right. I'm, I'm sure Tilton's going to be coming. Alan, do you know when the grand runs out for the town park i can the only update i have on the town park is that the uh, there has been a, a court date set for september um to review the wording of yes. what's uh -huh. municipal um and that dep is in review on um issues related to the uh delineation so uh -huh. they did have a they, they had a meeting last must have been last week I think I was there. Okay, well that's that's helpful to know, and I I have 
I've heard, um, you know, various things. As far as the money that the the town has granted already to the town park, uh, I think the first chunk uh, that the the, I, the, the standard um, without too much problem is that there you have three years to expend the money, and that means to pretty well spend it all, and. The uh, there was a first grant. Uh, I'd have to go back and look now, but I think I think we're starting to push a little bit on, you know, a next not not this year, but next year maybe for that third year, and then for the second grant would be a year after that, I think. But it's more also the uh, the grant that Lily's referring to. I think it has a two year timeline too, and that one would be the more drastic, I think, because they probably don't have flexibility. Um, we'd have to find out. But for the town, uh, towns uh, applicants can file for extenuating circumstances to extend the uh, CPC funding deadline. I'm pretty sure that's. Um, I I don't think we've ever done it. Had to do it. Oh no, I think we did do it for one small project up in Old Deerfield. But um, yeah, I think just really good to be aware of these and. Uh, the list of things I don't know about the town park it could fill a room, um, <laughs> but I do know that the delineation for the wetlands is uh, those delineations are three years and we're on the back end of that delineation now. So, okay. you know, okay. not imminent, but right around the corner. So Yeah, it's coming around. We'll, okay. Well, that so things will get a little done. complicated as we move forward, I think. Yeah. The bottom line. Okay. Very good. Um, anything else then on the application uh, in general and timelines and so on? So um, I would, uh, we will hopefully be able to wrap, wrap it up and finalize it by the next meeting in December because people are going to start. Um, if I if I remember correctly, because all the projects that we do know about are large, so we're going to want to yes. encourage people like Julie Chalfont to come early and come often, because yes, you know, remember last year it really got intense with the so many large projects. Yeah, would would it be the building committee that would be submitting that eighteen eighty eight grant? It would probably be yeah the TBAC. <laughs> because they're the ones who hired the the project manager and stuff like that yeah um no i think you're right i i i was hoping we wouldn't necessarily have to have a december meeting but i think we probably at least will have to maybe have a brief if one to, we finalize the application unless we want yeah, to do just, it by email can we do that by email sorry could we just so could we just agree by via email if all the only business is the packet yeah you know, the only thing that we want to get resolved in 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 a timely fashion is the packet is that something that we can so long as that doesn't uh, disrupt any open meeting requirements or anything like that yeah, that would be that would but, be um, concern. we can't really deliberate over email i mean I, right. if we all sort of make our suggestions send them in and pick them up at a meeting, I imagine that's fine, but we can't make it, we yeah. can't sign off on a form. By right, that. right, we couldn't approve anything by just, yeah, exchanges of emails, correct. Good. Okay. So, let, so let's kind of put that, keep that meeting on our, on our calendar and then let's see what we can do. I think, I think we're, we're pretty close to having it ready to, um, to go out. But uh, and you're right, Lily. We we really have to hit the ground running in January because um, people need to, even though they know they have till March first, and they'll all be doing it at the last minute. Not all of them. Uh, some of them tend to be pretty good about getting them in ahead of time. But um, yeah, we'll have to see how it goes. All right. Um, So where do you want to go with the agenda now, Lily? Uh, <laughs> the infographic for CPC. Can you? Uh... Uh, 
Maybe that one from the consortium that I emailed to everybody. Yeah. I thought that was really cool that um, I thought it did you all get to look at it? It, it seemed to I mean, I found it very helpful in clarifying guidelines for when we need to review an application. Yeah. And so therefore, uh, it will help the applicants as well, right? Right. Uh, we have, and we, the, you know, there, there again, there's also the, the flow chart, uh, one that um, is made available through C the coalition. Right. Um, did those go there? Do we have, did everybody get those? An, an email. I know the yeah uh, yeah the infographic one that you're talking about is that um, kind of matrix of oh yeah mm -hmm. criteria and categories. There was the, the, yeah the one I sent I sent an email October nineteenth. Yeah, that's the CPA project reference guide. Yeah. And we'll 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 have that you know especially if we're on Zoom we'll just have to have that probably right up on the screen when a when we're looking at a proposal we'll just make sure we all agree that the criteria are okay but um, most of the ones submitted they know exactly where they need to be and yeah but I wonder if it'd be helpful to add this to our application packet as a cover sheet you know that's not a bad idea. I don't think we've ever done that. It might be helpful so, to folks. Because there's there's links about, you know, you know, for if you're working on a publicly owned historic building, if you're working owned by a nonprofit, owned by an individual, it, it's it's got these great links with all the stuff on them. Do you want me to are you all looking at it or do you want me to share my screen again? Uh, yeah, you, you could bring it up real quick, just so remind people what what uh, we're talking about. And um, it's it's a good thing to you know I print it out on paper and have it in my file to look at all the time when I'm. This is the uh, so this is a new one. This has got hot links though. That's kind of the difference about like if you know making this stuff electronic. Um, yeah, you know, well, housing. Um, well, is that going to work for the application? Well, I, I think actually, the application should be online, right? <laughs> yeah. I've, yeah, I, I think just, that's a good idea. That isn't even the one I was thinking about, but yeah, you uh, were thinking of that other one that's in the the different columns, which is also yes, very right, helpful. Right. And yeah, uh, I don't know where that one lives. Did Tim Hilchey find that for us? Uh, no, it, we, we've had it on the committee, uh, uh -huh. well, maybe even before Tim, but uh, it's, av it's available again through uh, Community uh, Preservation Coalition. So maybe um, both of those as cover sheets would be helpful because yeah. That, yeah. that first one that you were thinking of is helpful in figuring out which category you should be applying for. Right, right. That was really helpful in that one. If if it isn't obvious, depending. Yeah, on that's the mean. one. As I said, I, I, that's the one I had in my mind. Just a, and I yeah. think that's um. Yeah, I mean, I I am sure that's a PDF or something that we can download. If I don't have it as a PDF. Okay. Um, but the the uh, the thing about this thing from. Um, the coalition was that it can direct people specifically to their their stuff so we could probably email Stuart Saginaw a little less, <laughs> maybe. Okay. Um, I'm, aware, I'm aware of the time and, um, and I'm always in favor of short meetings and we're already uh, getting a little bit uh, Beyond by what we well, I don't. I think we can all have deal with uh, what we have to do to find the time to do it. But do we have anything else that you feel or I? I let's see. The public information walkthrough that you wanted to put to the end is that what you're referring to? Um. 
because you the the infographic for CPC the public information walkthrough yeah. the criteria uh, graph. from the consortium that yeah the uh, well the public information was we we talked about this briefly at the last meeting is that we are required to hold uh, at least once a year a oh, public right. meeting that um, that informs the public about what we do and how they can go about accessing the funds. And that's why I think it was walked through the, would would that public meeting, um, would it be helpful to walk through that criteria graphic? And that's the one with the columns, if it would be helpful to walk yeah. through that, because that helps people figure out if they should even- Okay, and now, now I'm clear, okay. Um, but I believe wasn't our meeting last month supposedly the public information one? I don't know. Yeah, and and um, we've <laughs> we've I don't think we've ever had more than one person come to our public information session. So I think maybe in January we can uh, um, try and get the word out, and people can be, be guests, and we could uh, uh, be available to. So I have an idea, which is slightly. I mean, it's more the the spirit of the the law than the letter of the law, and um, so the CPC is supposed to have a representative in the con, uh, connecting community initiative committee, and yes. and 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 you happened to be there for your other hat last meeting, and I think I was de facto assigned because Tim Hilchey used to represent CPC on the CCI. Yes. And um, so I had sort of been assigned de facto that I would represent the CPC. Um, yes. But regardless, right. I don't. I don't know if you would like to do. Or, <laughs> <laughs> like well, to do it. You know. Uh, but um, but maybe one of the things that the representative from this committee could do on that committee is to request five minutes to talk about the value of the, the um, CPC and to suggest that people look at their committees and see if there's something that might be worth bringing to the CPC. Yeah, I, 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 I much appreciate the fact that you did uh, uh, volunteer and I, and I know you've got way more. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, um, you know, at, right now we're just finishing up the the open space draft, of, the final draft of the open space plan, and um, I don't. Uh, I think after the first of the year, except when I'm traveling, I uh, and even then I can probably uh, get on the CCI meeting. But I, if you're willing to share it a bit, I'm happy to try and uh, get on when I can. And and certainly, I think you're. It's an excellent point. That we should make um, just a short, you know, the uh, under two minute thing at the at the most, but just keep reminding people because I think CCI probably gets a better um, number of people uh, paying attention on on the on the boards and committees. It's definitely the best and uh, better than an email that they get in their mailbox. So. So, yeah, I'll I'll work with you on that. Okay. All right. So we can do that. Keep the information to flow. Try and get it out there. Yeah. All right. Do we have any other um, business that we need to attend to? So the next meeting is on December 14th. Is that I'm just December 14th, 615. Same same link. All right. So I think uh, unless there's anything else, um, we can make a motion to adjourn. I move that we adjourn at 28. And uh, we're all in favor, I'm sure. I have seen places where protests have been made about <laughs> adjourning the meeting, but not very often. Yes, Frank. Oh, I was just, I was saying aye to the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we're, we're all just talking you over. Gonna yeah. Get out of here. All, all right. right. Have a good yeah. night, everybody. Thanks Bye. very much, everyone. Night, everyone. Thank you. Uh huh. Bye. -bye.